Okay, everybody, so for this trick, I'm going to be needing the help of four very special cards. And these four cards just happen to be the four kings. The king of clubs, the king of hearts, the king of spades, and the king of diamonds, all right? The rest of the deck will not be needed for this trick, okay? Now, this trick that I'm about to show you is known as twisting the aces. Now, why am I using the kings, you ask? Well, to be honest, I just like using the kings better. But here's what's going to happen in this trick. I'm going to take the kings and one by one, I'm going to turn them face down. But you see, I'm not just going to take the card and flip it over like that because, well, quite frankly, that isn't magical. So we're going to do this in a much more magical manner. Now, hence the name Twisting the Aces, all we need to do is give the pile a little bit of a twist to kick this off. And what you'll notice is that one card, just as so, one of the kings already has turned face down. If we want to get a second king to turn face down, it takes a little bit of a shake. Just a little shake, okay? And hopefully you'll see that a second king is already now turned face down. But look, all we need to do is just give this a little bit of a wave. We can actually get a third king to turn face down just as so. So this leaves only one king left to go, and that is the king of spades, okay? And this one takes a little shake as well but this one needs to be just a little more emphatic than the last one and with that shake what you'll notice is once again all four kings are once again face down now i know what you're thinking how in the world could i be getting all of these kings to turn face down with just some twists and some flips like this just isn't possible now is it now you know what you're right it is impossible but you know why it happened? It's because I'm cheating. Do you guys remember what I told you the name of this trick was? It's called Twisting the Aces, am I right? Yeah. But you see, I cheated because I used the kings. So you know what, to be honest with you guys, if I was to be an honest magician and stay true to the magician's code, then I probably should have just stuck with the four aces. And for those of you who are actually skeptical, this would be the point in time in this trick. I would actually take the aces and I would actually hand them out to you for inspection. All of them are completely normal. Nothing to find. But anyways, guys, that is the trick. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So now let's get straight into the tutorial. Yo, 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 what's going on, guys? This is Trick City here. Welcome back. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you guys all enjoyed that quick little performance that I just did. Uh, if you guys did like it, make sure you slap that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below as well. Uh, I'm going to be teaching you this trick in just a moment. But before we do, I do want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, first off, I would like to thank you guys for 300 subscribers. I really do appreciate that. I know on a platform like YouTube, 300 really isn't a lot. But hey, we need to start somewhere. So thank you for 300 subscribers. And as the main thank you, I'm going to be giving you the tutorial to this trick. Because I had seen this trick performed on a few other channels on YouTube. Uh, one of the more popular creators at the moment, A Million Card Tricks, you guys all know who he is. And some of the smaller channels that I can't think of at the moment, but none of those channels posted a tutorial for this trick. Uh, the way I know how to do it is, uh, being a magician, I just watched the performances over and over again, studied it to the point where I was able to put all the pieces together. So yeah, that's that. And I'm very glad I was able to figure it out because again, this is one of my favorite pack of card tricks as of right now. So I'll be teaching that to you in today's video. I'll be the first one on YouTube to do it, in fact. So yeah, there's your thank you. Um, but before we get into that as well, I also want to give you guys a quick little update. And that is I'm going to be posting an updated deck collection video very, very soon. I'm going to do it on one of two days. My last deck collection video was April 24th, 2019. So I'm most likely going to post it on April 24, 2020. So it's a one year time lapse between each deck collection video. I figured that would make the most sense. Or my next goal that I would like to hit as far as sub count is 500 subscribers. So if by some miracle I had 500 subscribers within the next month, then boom, I'll go ahead and post the deck collection video then. But I doubt that's going to happen. So most likely April 24, 2020, that's the date. So, you know, mark that in your calendars. But yeah, I'm done talking. I've talked enough, you know, just, you know what, shut up, let's learn how to do this trick. Alright guys, hopefully you stuck around for the tutorial. So this trick actually is pretty easy to perform for the most part. You just need to know how to do two main sleight of hand techniques. 
those slides are going to be the Elmsley count and the Jordan count. If you don't know how to do those, I will leave some links to in-depth tutorials in the description box below, but I will go over them briefly in this video just in case as well, okay? But if you know how to do those uh, slides already, then you should have no problem performing this trick whatsoever. Okay, so for this trick, all you're going to be needing is a deck of cards. Any deck will work. For me, I am using the Play Dead Playing Cards by Riffle Shuffle, but any deck will work, all right? So once you have your deck, what you're going to want to do is set up the cards. Uh, the rest of the deck itself is normal, but you're going to want to remove the four kings, the four aces, and a random card, which I've already done here as so. So once you have all your cards, you're going to set them up as follows. You're going to take the four kings, leave them in any order that you'd like. I like to leave them in chased order, which is clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds, but any order is fine. It really doesn't make a difference, okay? The four aces, you are going to leave face down, except for one of them. You're going to take one of the aces and leave it face up in the third position of the four aces, okay? And then you're going to take your random card and put that underneath everything. So just to go over it one more time, it's the four kings, the four aces, three of the aces are face down, the one face up ace is going to be in the third position, and then the random card underneath, okay? So once you have this set up, you are ready to perform. So here's how you're going to start off. You have your stack of cards in one hand, and then you're going to be holding the deck in the other hand. And in this hand with the stack, you're going to have a thumb break on that random card, okay? So you're starting off with this packet in the hand with a thumb break, holding it in a bit of grip, okay? So you're going to introduce the four kings, and you're going to count them off one at a time on top of the deck in a very specific way. It's very, very easy, so just pay attention. So you're going to say, okay... We have the king of clubs, leave it on top of the deck. The king of hearts, leave it on top of the deck. The king of spades, now as you come over to peel off the king of spades, you're going to drop off this thumb break. So you're coming over, king of spades, and now I'm dropping that thumb break right here. And now when you peel off that king, you're going to maintain a pinky break on that king, okay? And then the King of Diamonds. Now, this King of Diamonds is a block of five cards. You have the four aces and that King of Diamonds. You need to hold this block as one card, keep it nice and square, and the King of Diamonds. While maintaining that pinky break on top of the deck, lift up all of the cards from the break, set the deck down. Okay? So, let's go over that one more time to make sure you have it down. So, once again, you start in this position. You have a thumb break already set on that random card, okay? Okay? You peel off the king of clubs, leave it on top of the deck. Peel off the king of hearts, leave it on top of the deck. As you go to peel off the king of spades, you are dropping this thumb break on top of the deck just as so. Peel off that king of spades, but this time insert your pinky there and hold a pinky break on that king of spades. And then the king of diamonds, which again is a block of five cards, the five, uh, excuse me, the four aces and the king of diamonds. Keep that block nice and square. You want to make it look like one card. Set that on top of the deck as one, and then you still have that pinky break. You're going to lift up all the cards in the pinky break and set the rest of the deck off to the side. So what this has effectively done is it has ditched two of the kings right there on top of the deck secretly, okay? So that's all you've done up to this point is you've counted off the cards, but you've secretly ditched two of the kings. So now this is the scenario you're in. You have the four aces, three face down, one face up, being sandwiched by two of the kings, okay? So once you are in this position, uh, as far as the pattern goes, just refer to the performance, by the way. I'm not going to go into too much detail with the pattern. Just check that out in the performance. I'm just going to go over the slides mainly. What you're going to do is you're going to just peel off that bottom card, take the card from the bottom, out from the top, and just start explaining how, okay, you know, brew, I'm going to flip the cards over, but I'm not just going to do this because that's not magical, blah, blah, blah. Leave that card from the bottom on the top face up just as so. This will now be the situation you're in. All you're going to do is just give the cards a bit of a twist and do an Elmsley count, okay? Now, I'll go over the Elmsley count briefly, but I'm not going to go in-depth with it. Again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, just check out the link in the description box below if you need a reference. But basically, the Elmsley count, what's happening is you're holding the cards by your thumb and your index and middle fingers by the corner. You're going to peel off the first card. You're going to use your thumb and you're going to block push every single card except for the bottom card. You're going to grab that giant block of cards as one card, and you're going to return that first card back to the bottom of this packet. And then you're going to count off 
both cards back over here as normal and you're going to out jog the face down card to emphasize that one card has turned face down. So all in all, it should look like this. One, two, three, four, and it looks like one of the kings has turned face down, okay? So once you've done the Elmsley count, uh, by the way, don't show this card because this is an ace. You're just going to take that face down card and set it on top of the deck face down. This is now the situation you are in. Once you are here, you are now going to just take the pack, give it a little shake, something like that. And then you are going to just reverse count the cards into the opposite hand, but you're going to leave them in a vertical spread, okay? So you're not going to leave them square like this. Okay, you're not going to do that. You're going to leave them in a vertical spread. So you're counting off one. You count off two. So the second card is a little bit in jog from the first. Count off three. The third card is in jog from the second. And four. This fourth is a block of three cards. So you want to keep this block square and make it look like one card. So you say four. Now it looks like two of the kings have flipped over. So as you're talking, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to go ahead. I just don't knocked over a bunch of these cards. As I was saying, once you're in this position, what you're going to do is on this block of three cards, you're going to come over and with your thumb, just lift up on the top card and catch a break. So this is what you've done. You've taken the top card, lifted it up on this block of three, and you caught a slight pinky break just as so, okay? So from here, this is uh, my favorite part of the trick is of how magical it is. This is the part where you wave over and then this card turns face down. Very, very simple. Now that you have this break, all you're going to be doing is you're going to be placing your thumb on the edge of this two card block right here underneath this break. And as you use your fingers as cover, you're going to just take that block, use your thumb, and you're going to push it down forward. So this is what it looks like. I'll, I'll leave my uh, fingers out so you can see the exposed view. I'm just pushing this packet forward. And naturally, the edge of, the, uh, of this row right here will stop you from pushing any further. So you don't have to worry about that. You wave, boom, the cards, it looks like it turns face down. So one last time here, let me just reset that block. You have the block here, you lift up on this card, catch a break, put your thumb on the edge of this two card block, and as you wave your fingers over, you're just using your thumb and pushing that stack forward, and then it looks like the card will turn face down. So if we take a look at this in full speed, it should look a little something like this. Just like that very, very magical moment there, okay? So, once you're here, you're going to square up all of the cards, okay? And now from here, I actually should have mentioned you should know how to do this as well. You are going to do an Ascanio spread. So, an Ascanio spread looks a little something like this. And it shows that you have only one card face up. But there's actually a block of cards here that you're keeping square secretly, okay? Now, I'll go over the Escanio spread uh, a little bit, uh, again, just a little bit of a, um, a brief, a brief uh, introduction to it here. Uh, this is basically what's happening. You're taking your thumb. You're holding the cards a bit of grip, I should say, by the way. You're holding the cards a bit of grip, taking your thumb, peeling off the top card. Your index finger peels off the bottom card, and then your middle finger peels off the next bottom card, and it spreads out the cards just like this. So one last time, hold the cards a bit of grip. Thumb peels off the top card. Index finger peels out. The next card, middle finger peels out the third card, just like that. All right? So in full speed, it should look a little something like this. Okay? So you're showing off that you have three face down cards and one face down, uh, excuse me, face up king still left. Keep this packet right here nice and square because this is the block of three cards. You're going to come over, grab the packet. You're going to take the card at the bottom, move it to the top, and just point to the king and say, okay. We still have one king face up, and that is the king of spades. The purpose for doing this is just taking the bottom card and moving it to the top. You need to get this card to the top for the next uh, phase of the trick to work. So your excuse for this is just, okay, we have one card left, the king of spades. And that's just a natural action. You're taking the card, pointing to it from there, set the card on top, and then square everything up nice and neatly. Make sure you don't flash any of those aces in the pile. So from here, you're going to go ahead and give the cards a shake. But this time, you're not just going to shake it and be done with it. You're actually going to secretly flip over the pile. Now, the way you're going to do this is you're going to hold the cards by these two corners just as so. Uh, actually, It actually depends on what hand you're holding these cards in. If you are holding the packet in your left hand, you are going to hold the cards by the top right corner with your middle finger and your 
bottom left corner with your thumb, but it's going to be the opposite corners if you're holding this in your right hand, okay? So make the adjustments accordingly. But for me, I'm holding it in my left hand, so this is how I'm holding it. So as you're holding it by the corners, you're going to shake the pile, but as you shake, you're taking your index finger and just rotating the packet just as so. So it's very similar to a shake change. So it just looks like this. You're shaking, shaking, and then you flip over like that. Don't get the, your finger caught in between like I just did there. But again, you shake, you shake, and then you use your index finger to kind of turn it at the end. If you shake it correctly, it should just look like you're shaking the pile, and no one will notice this rotating action, okay? So you shake, and then you flip at the end. So once you've, once you've effectively rotated this pile, this is going to be the situation you are in. You have three face-down cards, and you have three face up cards okay so from here in order to show that all the cards are face down you are going to execute what is known as the jordan count now the jordan count is very similar to the elmsley count but still very different at the same time okay uh, again i'm not going to go over this in depth but i will give you a brief overview if you don't know how to do it in my opinion it's a little bit harder but it's not that much harder so it's the same grip you're holding the cards by the corner by your thumb middle and index finger uh, again by the bottom corner you're going to peel off the first card, so so far it's the same uh, opening as the Elms account. Then you're going to come over and peel off the second card, normally. Then you're going to take both of these cards, put them on the bottom of the packet as you take your thumb and push over all the cards, a big block of cards as one, except for the bottom card. Peel that off as one, and then take that last card and just set it on top and if you do it correctly it should look like you have all four cards face down so at full speed the jordan count should look a little something like this okay so once you've executed the count this will now be your scenario if you're in the scenario you know you've done everything right so far king at the top ace next to it three face up aces king at the bottom okay so once you're here, you're going to want to catch a break above the bottom two cards. Now doing a pinky count with a very small packet like this is very difficult. So if you can do that, then props to you. Uh, but for me, I like to stick with this. It's very, very simple. Just use a little misdirection, talk to your spectator, and just riffle down one, two cards in the back with your thumb. And then you're just going to catch a pinky break right on those cards, okay? So now you're holding a break, uh, again, above these bottom two cards right here. Once you've done that, you're going to push over the top card. I think I might have just flashed there. Don't do that. Um, and show off the king. You're going to take this king and move it to the bottom. So you're putting this on the bottom of the packet. You're leaving it sticking out. But again, you're maintaining the break above those bottom two cards. Uh, technically three cards now because this card's at the very bottom. Okay. All you're going to do is now again refer back to the... Uh, performance for the pattern but i said something like blah 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 kings i should have used the aces and as i said that all i do is i take the king push it in so that it is square with the rest of the cards then from there what i do is i pull down on this break more i lift up with my fingers so i can get some elevation on the top cards and then i just spread those three cards out to show three aces and then all you need to do is just flip over this face down card to show all four aces of course the rest of those cards that were just there are now being held right here this ace of clubs right here is a block of three cards so you want to keep this as square as possible and really make sure it looks like one playing card okay so let's look at that at full speed once again catch your break back here as you see push over the king move it to the bottom and again, this is what the thing should look like in succession at full speed. You just push in and then spread just as so. Okay, very, very clean, very, very magical moment there. Don't rush this moment. Spread the cards out, flip over the ace, and then hold this display for just a moment. Let this really sink in for the spectator. This will blow their mind, okay? So from here, uh, you have a few different options. You can literally just show them the aces square up the cards, put the cards back in the deck, and just be done with it and leave. However, however, um, a lot of spectators are going to want to inspect these cards. They just saw four kings somehow magically turn face up to face down, and then within a split second, they all change to aces. 
the point I'm trying to make here is absolutely no one is going to believe that that should be remotely possible. So you are going to have a lot of spectators that are like, okay, let me see those cards. Something's up with them, right? So very, very easy to get around this. Just use a little bit of misdirection. Get a break on these bottom two cards again because these are the two cards that you want to ditch and get rid of. These are those two leftover kings. All you need to do from here is simply do a gambler's cop and then hand them the cards as you cop them away and boom, you have the cards secretly palmed away here. If you are sitting at a table, you can just cop these away, drop them in your lap. If you are standing, you can cop these away and as they're checking them out, you can place them in your pocket. Uh, either way, just get rid of these cards and boom, you will be left completely clean. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering about the deck I know you guys are probably you know you guys are thinking what about these two leftover kings that are sitting here in the deck right um, to be honest I don't think you need to worry about it because everyone is gonna wanna check out those four aces they know for a fact even though there isn't there is something going on with those cards everyone's gonna be checking out those cards seeing what's going on no one's gonna think twice about the deck no one's gonna be like oh let me check the deck but you know what you run into a heckler every now and then. I understand that. So if you want to be ultra safe and really be as clean as possible, all you need to do is simply go ahead and as they are inspecting those aces, just simply go through the deck, find your kings, and turn them over and no one will see you because again, all the attention is on those aces. But yeah, if you get all of that and you accomplish all that, you will end the trick completely clean. There will be nothing to find and you will be left with several minds blown. Alright, but uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Make sure to slap a like, and of course, share the video with your friends if you enjoyed it as well. Had a lot of fun with this one. Hopefully you guys have fun with this trick too, and I will see you guys for my next video. Card Trick 8, signing off. Peace.